eight, point seven, point six, no. <laughs> point five. This is the shallowest bit though, I it think. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. Brace yourself. I've got nothing either side of me. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Point three. Point two. I should start going up very shortly. Yeah, it's still got point two. Please. 20 <laughs> centimetres, it's loads. I mean, it's... what's the problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> point one, oh my god. Point one, oh shit, it was supposed to go. It's supposed to be coming up now. Yeah, it's supposed to be getting deeper, yeah. It is. It's slightly to port, I into this to get the deeper people. Oh, that was a little touch. A little touch. <laughs> Welcome to Portugal, rainy Portugal. Yeah, it hasn't been like this every day. We've had some lovely sun, we've had some decent wind. You've got all the way up here, Atlantic sailing in the mm. tides as well. Real sailing, good. Yeah, but you have to watch the bottom because uh, some of these rivers get quite low. And we're, <laughs> yeah. we're actually parked in a river at the moment. But we begin this episode in Spain. So I hope you like the film. Coming up, sailing out of the Med, the end of an era revisiting the beautiful island of Culatra and navigating wind and tide through the Strait of Gibraltar. We begin with a road trip through the hills of southern Spain to the picturesque mountaintop city of Ronda. The bridge spans the gorge, linking the 15th century new town and the old town. There is some history here. The view from the top is breathtaking. I'm sure this rock's been here a long time, but I wouldn't want to be living down there, would you? <laughs> I think things might fall on you. It looks like the town is built on the edge of the world, buildings standing tall on solid rocks. And it's all been here for centuries. The only thing that has collapsed over the years is the bridge. In the end, it took two goes to complete the bridge. The first one collapsed, killing 50 people, mostly residents. So they had another go. And you can see that it's been completely reinforced on both sides. No one was taking any chances again. And it's pretty solid. That was finished in 1793, I think. The city spreads dramatically back from the rock face and just the other side of the bridge, in the new town, stands the oldest bullfighting ring in Spain the Plaza de Torres. The ring itself is 66 metres in diameter with two layers of seating. It's old, but not as ancient as the city. One thing that has surprised me is I thought this was pretty ancient, but this was built in the 18th century. So not so long ago, really. So there's regular hiding places that you can uh squeeze behind. This one looks like it's been a bit gouged. And yes, there are still bullfighting events here. I find that quite unnerving and I'm not sorry we turn up on a non-event day. Behind the main ring there is a dressage arena which is home to one of Spain's top equestrian schools and a museum celebrating the history of bullfighting. Great costumes, but as a sport, it's really not for me. On the way back to Gibraltar and the boat, we stop off in the much more modern town of Soto Grande. In fact, it isn't so much a town as a purpose-built marina estate, privately owned for the rather wealthy. Look, if you owned one of these apartments, you'd have your apartment and your boat 
just outside, ready to go. Very pretty. The average price of a home here is around 2 million euros, but I'm not sure if that comes with the berth. Back to Gibraltar and Steve carries out some last minute checks to the mast before we leave. Casting off with help from our friend Anna. Good to go. Yeah. Yep. Go, go, go. Thank you. And then bye bye. we are gone, leaving the med. Oh, but first we'd better get some fuel. So is this really the cheapest fuel in the world? It's not as cheap as it was four years ago when we came through. I think it was half the price it is now, but it's still the cheapest fuel in the med, I reckon. Yeah, it's very good. It's one of the few that I don't bother with the, um, the funnel either, because they, they put so much goes through here. This is good, clean stuff, so it's nice. We'll fill it right up. So that's it, we're off. And someone's just coming in. Come very close to the planes on the way through here. It's an easy jet arrival. Leaving Gibraltar is an event in itself. The Levante wind blows over the mountain causing catabatic blasts and the bay is full of anchored ships to navigate. There's also numerous fast ferries coming through. The strait itself is one big shipping lane with various strong tides and eddies. Now there's the added fun of the orcas popping up to play with the boats here. So we are looking forward to some entertaining times as we head for La Gauche. That's it, the clouds are building over the rock, which is good news for us because it means the Levante wind is blowing, which is in the right direction for us. It's not a lot of it at the moment though, it's sort of filling in just now, is it? Well, it's been all over the place. The dials have been going, <laughs> <laughs> going round, coming through underneath the rock. But I think we're settled now and I think, I think you're right. I think it's on the beam here and there's probably enough for all sails. All sails, let's get the main up. <laughs> yeah, we want to see. I want to see our new sail, so yeah, let's uh, let's come up into wind and stick the main up and see if we can uh, get going. There is a ship coming in here though, so we'll have to watch out for him. Okay. This is an exciting moment, the first time we get to fly our new mainsail. With a little help from the Yankee. bit of mist across Africa over there, blanketing our uh, Yankee a little bit with the main because the wind's come around right behind, it's not much of it, but it's enough to get going and we've got the tide with us so we're doing five and a bit knots, that's not bad, over the ground. Uh, but I'm going to do a little bit of fishing because it's a good spot for fishing. So I've got the, uh, I've got the rod out, you can see I've got myself a big net and I've got myself a gaff. So we're properly set up now for, for the Atlantic. We're getting lots of uh, fish in the Atlantic. And the other thing I've got is one of these. I've got a hand reel. I didn't really want to get another rod one because they're expensive and so you've got to store them and all that sort of stuff. So people said these, these are good, just a hand reel. I've put a rappeller, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it, thing on the end of it. And they're supposed to dive down really well with a big spoon bill thing in the front there. So yeah, we we'll give that a go. And I've rigged up uh, a bit of elastic. This is an old uh, thing that came off a stand up paddle board. And I put some elastic through in the middle of it as well, some strong elastic. So we tie that around it. So uh, when you get a strike, it doesn't sort of rip it out of the, the fish's mouth. It gets, uh, gets a soft enough uh, take because that's the problem with the uh, hand lines apparently. You, know, you haven't got the sort of give that you've got in a rod. So yeah, let's put this on and we'll see how it goes. Looks good to me.
this is the town of Tarifa, which is notoriously windy, but not too bad today. Uh, lots of odd currents going on around here, as they do. This is the sort of thinnest part of the of the strait. You got this bit of Africa, then sort of goes drops away, so it gets a bit wider after this. You can see a whole line of white horses in there. There's odd currents that go on, and we have got to watch out because uh, the tide is going to change. I've got the tide timetables here. I'll stick them up there on the screen so you can see them. They come from from this. The uh, Atlantic pilot guide. I can find them online and you'd think they'd be a good online one but it doesn't seem to be. Uh, but you can see two hours before high tide is where we are now and it is about to change. Better to stay a little bit offshore according to this because it'll eddy round and be uh, inshore in the wrong direction first so we'll do that see if we can see any orcas. In the end, it isn't the orcas we need to worry about, but the white horses. The wind goes from 5 to 35 knots in a matter of metres, and the swell comes with it. It makes for a slightly rocky ride to our first stop, one of the many rivers along this coast, Playa de Sancti Petri. So a bit of a grey morning. But it is lovely, fantastic anchorage. These are the sort of anchorages you get, southern Spain, uh, these sort of lagoons and then into, into Portugal, the same sort of thing. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm just going to show you though, look, that's how close, it's a wide angle. We're actually, <laughs> we're not actually more than about 10 metres away from the, the shoreline here. We were sitting in five metres of water. When, when we anchored here, the, uh, the water was right up at that tree line, which is about I don't know, 400 metres away. So massive difference in uh, in the landscape here as the as the tide goes through. And it's not much of a tide; it's a couple a couple of metres here, but it's just such flat land. It makes makes that sort of difference. So yeah, we had we had a day here just editing because we had to to catch up with that. It takes about three days on average to. Uh, to edit the pieces so you've got to sort of factor in that that bit of time and there wasn't much wind yesterday so so we stayed here uh, but yeah we are now going to move across the bay of Cadiz so or Cadiz as they uh, they call it Cadiz is actually just just over here in the in the distance um, but yeah it's a uh, it's about 100 miles so you're not going to do it in in a day so we're going to set sail now just as the tide turns to to take us out so it's going to be a tentative go out through here with quite quite low water it gets a little bit shallow in places out there but we'll uh, yeah we'll tiptoe our way out and then spend a night going across the bay and uh, trying to avoid the orcas because that's going to be the the biggest spot for orcas we've come across so far because we're going to be in deep water and it's going to be at night so uh, so yeah we'll talk about that on, on the way across I'm have to leave that down there for a little while I think bit of cleaning to do there very thick clay, clayy sort of sticky mud here, but just as well actually, because when the tide runs through here, it was going, must be going six knots, because we came down here doing 11 knots and we weren't on much over tick over. So yeah, really going. Now it's slack tide, so we're going out. It's low tide though, and it springs. So it's gonna be low, low. We're gonna have to just gingerly tiptoe our way through. Um, I mean, we might hit the bottom, but it's soft. It's soft mud. It's not the end of the world if we go slow enough. And it's a rising tide so it'll lift us off so hopefully hopefully that won't happen and we can actually get through nothing's coming off this look at it <laughs> it's still piled up on there i'll just drop it down a little bit you just slow down the touch i'm just going to drop it a little bit if you drop it it sort of goes turns the other way so it runs over it in the front, hopefully that will wash some off. Again. Oh, there's only one little bit stuck left on it. Come on, last bit. That's it. It's up and it's clean, that'll do. so many boats so many boats yeah all uh, all on moorings swinging moorings here yeah i was really surprised when we came in well that's a good spot isn't it it's nice yeah it is 
It is. Yeah. No, but, it's beautiful. But the deep channel that we're in <laughs> is... <Deep. laughs> I mean, it's, it's got okay. four metres under us here, yeah. but there are points looking at here. I mean, actually, it's a good it's a good way to look at it and say the chart says we should have, we should be in a depth at the moment of six metres. We've got four metres under, so it's about right. Yeah, I'd say that's At right. low, this is obviously yeah. low data yeah, yeah, on yeah. here. So it's about right. So that means on the bit going out, it says there's two metres, so we will be dragging our ass on the bottom. Okay. Uh, on this shallow bit going through as and it is. it's mud is it? But it's, oh yeah soft mud and it's a rising tide. Yeah so, okay. Yeah that's 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 all okay we just go slowly and if we stop we stop and have to wait for the uh, wait for the tide to lift us. So we couldn't have gone any sooner could we? No I think we're, <laughs> we're doing it. So yeah for this sort of navigation we do use the uh, Navionics and hit the sonar chart this one here and uh, yeah you get just a more accurate hopefully <laughs> view of what's there I mean obviously it's mud so it can it can shift around um, but the the good thing about this is it's taking data from people as they go over it so it should be reasonably updated and it's usually pretty accurate so uh, so let's see if we can tip our way out okay so we're out of the creek but we're not out of the shallows yet because the most shallowest bit is just before these next markers it goes down to two meters and we draw two meters so we have to try and go directly through the middle of here, the deepest part, but it says it's a bit of accurate steering from Judy. Yeah, I'm okay so far. I've mm. got one underneath me, but I think we're coming down to a slightly narrower bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah we're, not on, we're not on the shallow bit yet. No. Let's see where we get to. Got a bit of a swirl going on as well, so yeah. just, just slow right up. Let's just go through dead slow. Point eight. Seven, point six, no. <laughs> point five. This is the shallowest bit though, I it think. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. Brace yourself. I've got nothing either side of me. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Point three, <laughs> point two. I well, we should start going up very shortly. Yeah, it's still got point two. Please. 20 <laughs> centimeters, it's loads. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Point one, oh my god. Point one, oh shit, it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be coming up now. It's supposed to be getting deeper, yeah. It is. It's slightly to the core, going into this to go. Oh, that was a little touch. A little touch. <laughs> and now we're going up. A little soft touch. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we're oh, quite quickly up. Yeah, now we're going up. Good, I, good. That was a sill, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's obviously the, it's the highest part. Just a little bit soft, but it felt fairly soft. Oh, your heart goes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 1.6, oh. Look at that. Blimey, it's flying. So much depth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go a little bit to port now. Okay. Go on to this one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because it is, it is very rolly here, so. Yeah, there's yeah. about, yeah, there's probably about, what, 30 centimetres of swell. Exactly. So exactly. that makes a difference. Just this little ocean swell coming in. Well, best laid plans and all that. We are out at sea. And as you can see, there's absolutely zero wind. So plan B, we're not gonna go across tonight because we certainly don't want a motor all night. And uh, we should have wind now. So if it's not here now, it might not ever come up. So um, so yeah, we're gonna just go a little bit further north. Anchor is a sort of industrially type anchorage uh, by Cadiz, it looks like, uh, on Navali. So, we would just sit there for the night and then we were a little bit closer, about two hours closer. So it's about 88 miles rather than 100 nautical miles to do. So I think if we got up at dawn or just before dawn and, and left, we can go across the Gulf uh, in a day and get there before dark, hopefully. Um, and it does mean we're going across during the daylight. So if we do get orcas, we can film them. It looks like an industrial harbour outside the town of Cadiz so not a place to stay for long, but it is a safe haven with a small anchorage and it is wonderfully quiet with just the birds for company. Okay, so this is take two of trying to cross the Gulf of Cadiz. 
uh, leaving in the dark because we're trying to get to the other side during daylight if you look at the the models here I, I showed this before when I had a sort of free week they did a free week trial of the premium thing on, on predict wind and you can sort of put through all the different wind models so I went through it properly try and see if we are going to get some wind today and it does say we are they're all agreeing look they're all, they're all there so uh, predict wind Europe's what I'm going to go for here I think that's sort of hopefully going to be pretty accurate that's getting us there about half past eight so half past eight nine o'clock that that should be still a bit of light there be after sunset but that'd be enough to uh, get us through into the anchorage that'd be quite nice so let's hope this time we actually do get the wind that we were forecast good try and get out of here in the dark now should be interesting Well, the sun is up, the wind has arrived, but it uh, took a while. So I think actually by the time we get there, it will probably be dark. Um, but it's a, quite a big lagoon. We've been in there before, so I'm not, not too worried. Always better to get there in the daylight if you can, but I don't think we will. Uh, the main thing at the moment is looking out for, for orcas because this area that we're in, the Gulf, is, uh, is a hot spot for them. We have a look at uh, a couple of apps. This one, uh, Orkiness, uh, shows us yeah, quite a lot that tend to be in the middle of this bay and, uh, and no foreign land as well has quite a good app that sort of shows all the interaction so it's as well to, to look on there so we know you know this is probably the most likely place mainly because we're sort of offshore going across the bay that you might might see them um, so for us I mean I'm not too worried as I said before because we've got a keel hung rudder and um, we've got the black water tanks that are full so we could pump them out if they were sort of looking to play a bit too hard with a boat everything that i've seen with them looks like they're just playing it's just if you happen to have those spade type rudders are susceptible because you can give them a bit of a bash and uh and, and break them but that's that's not the case with this boat so so really i don't think it's a problem if worse came to worse and they were properly attacking the boat then all bits are off and i would use the uh the firecrackers i've got a couple of firecrackers in here but um i mean you really don't want to be using these it's not it's not something that you you do lightly but as i say if they're trying to sink your boat then all bets are off so i do have them the constant changes in the weather and sea state mean we could be looking at another night at sea some very interesting cloud formations we've had during the course of the day and rather mixed winds so whew, it was fine this morning but now it's dropped so we're not going to make it in by this evening to Faro, but we will get there in the morning. Ah, oh, early tomorrow morning, I think. <laughs> this swell is really quite incredible. We're doing about two knots, and that's partly because of the swell. So I hope that dies down and we have a and we have a quiet night. In the end, we do make it in the dark and anchor at about four in the morning. By then, the wind has dropped completely and we wake up to a glorious sunrise by the island of Kulatra. Well, after a day and a night of being bashed about out at sea, it's very nice to come into a lovely tranquil anchorage like this. It's a really good thing about the Algarve coast is you've got these lagoons all the way along it. This is one of the biggest one. Faro over the back there, there's a, an airport there as well. You get the odd plane that comes over on the flight path, but that's really all that breaks the silence. And the rest of the time all you can hear is the, is the birds and the occasional boat, because it's a working island this, it's Kalatra, it's a big sand spit, but it is an island, so everything comes and goes by boat and actually you can see at the back the other thing that you get a lot this cloud here that's actually fog that's sea fog all the way along so there's going to be dense sea fog out at sea so not a good day to go sailing anyway no wind anyway so uh, yeah we will we will sit here and enjoy the tranquility Julie's doing her uh, yoga on the foredeck but we're going to go and have a little look over at Kalatra as well and uh, and explore we did come here four years ago and not much has changed. There is a marina for local fishing boats with a dinghy dock. I feel reasonably confident about getting 
fresh fish for lunch. Plenty of fishing boats. Because Kulatra is an island, everything is delivered by boat. And the absence of roads means distribution is by tractor. The boat huts are mostly used as workshops and there is still just one main street through the town. <laughs> Doesn't spell, does it? Not really. It's, not it's just beautiful. Yeah, lovely. The petals, the leaves, just coloured. The other side of the island is the Atlantic coast. Plenty of surf and miles of sand. So this is the walkway that leads through to the ocean. I so remember this. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> I'm glad it's still here. Yeah, yeah, it's They've lovely. done some updates elsewhere, but this is as it was, I think, and I think it's just really, really quite quaint, really quite nice. We're going right to the other side of the island. Yeah. And then, and then that's it. <laughs> that, that is the <laughs> island. <laughs> yes, there's not an awful lot here. It's, uh, it'll be a strange place to live, I'm sure. This is one of the most beautiful beaches in the Algarve. And because of the island's remote location, not at all busy. And we end the day with a fish meal. This is lovely. Delicious. Great fish dinner. All local stuff. That's what you need. Okay, we're just getting ready to go. We've got uh, quite a nice breeze that's come up, so we should have a, a reasonable sail. But it's quite cold and cloudy and, yeah, just not that warm. <laughs> the tide at the moment is still coming in, so we're against the tide. So it's be sort of high tide as we go out, but uh, that's okay. At least we're going out on a rising tide. It's always good to do that in, in case you uh, come a cropper and go aground, it, it lift you off. But it's, it's pretty well marked going out of here, so that shouldn't be a problem. We did actually run aground in the dinghy, though, the other day coming through this marshland behind us. We went uh, into there, there's a town called Ohio, which, I mean, it's not as pretty as, as Kalatra, it's not that sort of place, but uh, it had some nice bits and buildings with this sort of nice tiles and, and that sort of stuff going on. So it's worth going there and they had a supermarket. So yeah, on the way back from there in the, uh, in the dinghy, we started getting some really shallow stuff, trying to take shortcuts and have to wait for the uh, tide to come up, just pull ourselves along. But we got there. So that's good. So yeah, let's get this chain up and hope there's not too much mud on it. I've mentioned this before, but I've uh, changed the deck wash to fresh water because uh, we've got the stainless steel chain, so it's better for it. Get this mud off. God, it's filthy down there. But we can at last get all our sails up, and that's what makes for a perfect sailing day. I'm going to have to do a little bit of washing of that mainsail. Look, already it's got marks on it. That's from our baggy wrinkles because we were going downwind in the rain yesterday, and the baggy wrinkles have got lots of sand in them, so all got a bit gungy. How's it looking here? What speed have we got? Um, uh, nearly three knots, which is not <laughs> bad on five knots of wind. Yeah. We're just going past this sandbank here. And then once we get past that, we'll be able to turn about, I don't know, 30 degrees. Yeah. And then we'll fly. Well, we'll have it on the beam. I'm not sure we'll fly with the, that little wind, but yeah, see what we can do. We'll go faster than the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might happen. Let's see.
Yeah, sailing with all the sails up, it makes such a difference having the new mainsail and stay sail. It's been just fantastic to play with. <laughs> it's lovely. I just sit here and look at them and tweak. It's, it's, it's great fun. And they give us a bit of extra speed for the uh, ocean voyages mm. we've got coming up. But uh, to add to that, we've also got to clean the bottom. We've got a lift uh, in Lagosh, which is just up the road next week. Yeah, we haven't lifted the boat since Turkey, which was, what, two years, yeah. two years ago. So I'm looking forward to that. And for the first time, we're going to take the rudder off. Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, I'll have a look, but uh, I've never done it, and uh, there wasn't any play in it last time we were there, but I think, uh, yeah, before we do the Atlantic, it might be as well to do that and pull mm. the prop shaft out as well. So, uh, yeah, there's us we'll see. I mean, there's, there's always some surprises when you lift your boats. Yeah, there are. Not too many bad ones, <laughs> I hope. hope. <laughs> but then we will be across um, to Madeira. That's where we're going. Oh, but first, we're going to Annapolis. Mm. Oh, yeah, oh, don't dear. leave out that. We're yeah. going to leave the boats in the yard and go to Annapolis. We're going to take the opportunity, while she's on the hard, to, uh, to go over and see that we had great fun there last year and actually one of the things i want you to do is that down in the description mm. i'm going to put a link because we're in for the awards for the young cruisers we like being young cruisers you see yeah we, we do you can be a young cruiser <laughs> in your 60s it's official so you need to vote for us so click on those links and you can see who else is uh, is is up for these different uh, awards yeah. there and, and give us a vote you just click the thumbs up thing so, yeah, yeah, but it is it is all for fun, really. Yeah, oh yeah, it's all for fun. And the party. <laughs> we want to get to the party. If we get nominated, we get to go to the party. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and say we're young cruisers. Anyway, then we are going to Madeira and the Canaries and down to Cape Verde. And then what are we going to do? We're not going straight across. We're, we're not going straight across. No, <laughs> I wasn't going to, to tell you this because if we tell you, then, it, you know, something will happen and we won't, might, might not make it. But we're hoping to get to Senegal and the Gambia as well. So before we, uh, we mm. go over to Cape Verde, we'll go down to Africa and then across to Cape Verde and, and out. But look, it's dependent on wind and time and lots, lots of other things as well. But that's the plan. That's the rough yeah, plan. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. So there we are, that's where we are now. So thank you very much to our patrons and do try and meet us if you can up in Annapolis. Thank you to our subscribers and thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.